welcome back to our tutorial series for the Bridge 6 and Bridge 4 MIDI foot controllers by Pirate MIDI. Today we're going to cover the interface settings, the user interface, the light brightness and all the other settings that you might want to change on your Bridge 6 or your Bridge 4. Today we're going to use the Bridge 4 instead of Bridge 6 like we did last time. First is the UI mode. Now, you'll notice that by default we have the extended UI displayed, which as I said in the previous video, will show the FlexiPort modes as icons and graphs, as well as the switch labels and the bank name. But let's say that you want everything to be a little bit bigger and you don't need to see what mode the FlexiPorts are in. Let's go to the global menu and we'll go to interface general UI and we will change the UI mode on the right here to simple. We'll save that, exit the menu. You'll see that the switch labels are a bit bigger, the bank name is centered and the flexi port icons are gone. So that's a simple UI if you need to clean up the look so that you can see it a bit easier when you're playing on stage. Let's look at some of the other interface options. Back into the global interface settings, general UI, we have the LED brightness. It's by default on medium, but it can get even brighter on high. That's really bright, but great for when you're playing outdoors in the daytime. Off or low. We also have the switch states. Now, um, the labels on here aren't very descriptive, but there's a full description in the user manual, and I'm about to explain them to you now. We have the transmit states and persistent states. So when you change banks on your bridge six, let's bring this over here. If I turn those off and I change to bank one, and then I change back to bank zero, none of my switches are how I left them. And that's because by default, the persistent states is off. Now, sometimes you might want this, sometimes you might not. So there's an option. Let's turn that on and we will now toggle off two of these switches, go to the next bank, go back, and our switch toggle states are how we left them. Transmit states is very much in the same wheelhouse. Let's go back to our interface settings. Transmit states, if we turn that on, every time you enter a bank, Whatever state those switches are in, those messages will be transmitted. So if you change banks and one of the switches is on, those toggle on messages will be sent again. And this is useful for keeping gear in sync so that if you have a default state that you want to work from in that bank, um, that will just be ready to go and it will be semi-automated. So transmit states will send those messages again when you enter that bank to make sure everything is just how you want it. For now, we're gonna turn transmit states off and persistent states off. And we've left our UI mode in simple. And then we're going across to the next page of these settings to look at the next interface options. And they are boot delay and hold time. So boot delay, delays the amount of time it takes for your bridge to turn on. This can be useful particularly in conjunction with the power on messages. So if you have some other devices on your pedal board that take longer to turn on, but you want to send power on MIDI messages to those, you can delay your bridge six or your bridge four boot time up to 20 seconds so that you can wait for that other device to be ready to receive any power on MIDI messages. So the power on messages will be sent after this boot delay time. The other setting here, hold time, is for the long hold time of the switch presses. So as I showed in an earlier video, you can have MIDI messages that are sent when you press the switch all different ways. Double tap, press, toggle on, toggle off. And here you can see if I long hold the switch, the secondary switch will turn on and send the hold message stack. And so over here in the UI settings, we can actually adjust how long that switch takes to activate. So you can bring that all the way down to 300 milliseconds or maximum of two and a half seconds. So that can be really helpful for making it a bit quicker and easier to activate those hold switches. Let's 
just show you how that works. We'll set that to 300 milliseconds. Exit the menu. And then we'll do a hold. And look how quick that is compared to the Bridge 6. There we go, that's hold time. Some other important user interface elements are of course the bank name and the switch names. On the Bridge 4, to change the bank name on board, you go to the menu and you just go over here to bank name. To change the bank name, you simply press and hold a switch, one or two, and that will change the character. And if you press and hold for a few seconds, it will start scrolling and it will accelerate, which helps you not press the button a hundred times like this. So just press and hold like so, and you can see the characters there scrolling through quite quickly. Of course, the web editor is a much faster way to do this. You can find that at edit.piratemidi.com. To change the switch labels, it's very, very similar. We'll go into our menu, go to switches, choose our switch, and then we'll go to the switch name. And that's exactly the same process in terms of typing the name as it is for the bank names. And as I said, the web editor is much faster for doing that. Another user interface element are the LED colors. And here's how you change the color of an LED. We go to the switch, we'll choose switch one, and we'll go to the configuration menu. The configuration menu shows the switch mode, the LED action, and the color of the LED. So we scroll across to the color, and then we just simply scroll through the colors like so. By default, there are a bunch of nice colors there, but there are also custom colors available in the global interface menu as well. You can set colors whatever you like, as dim or as bright or as colorful as you need to match your gear or to match your own idea of what that effect would look like if it was a color. And then of course here we have the LED action and that is simply the difference between going on and off with a toggle or being dim and then being brighter when it's toggled on. So I'll show you what that looks like. Exit the menu. If I toggle that off, you can see the LED is still on, but it's just a lot more dim, like that. So that's dim and on, and then the LED color, which we changed to green. And then to find the custom colors, we go into the global menu, interface, custom colors. And here you can use a red, green, and blue mixing system to choose whatever color you would like. There are 12 custom colors which you can save to each of your bridge devices. The last thing you need to know about controlling your Bridge 6's UI is that most of this stuff can be controlled with external MIDI commands. So by sending MIDI messages to your bridge, you'll be able to turn on and off switches, change banks, select um, different press types and even change the colors on the fly of the LEDs. So this is great for overriding the onboard settings with external software like loopers and doors. And all those MIDI commands to control your Bridge 6 or your Bridge 4 can be found at the end of the user manual. So that's it for this video. We've covered all of the different interface settings you can change on your Bridge 6 or your Bridge 4. I'll see you next time.